this lesson we will learn about carpocation rearrangements and specifically how to do ring expansion when it comes to carbocation rearrangements, how to show arrows, and how to even know that carbocation rearrangement is happening. So in the example that I have shown you, we see a cyclopentane with a double bond that's reacting with HBr. And the example is asking us to show the mechanism, which means we need to show the arrows for the transformation of the reactant to the product. We can see going from the reactant to the product that something happened because we started with the cyclopentane and we are ending up with the cyclohexane. So we had a ring expansion. Let's go ahead and start our mechanism and see how we should do it. First, when we have a double bond and we have an HX where X is a halogen such as bromine, chlorine, or iodine, the first step is that we take electrons from the double bond, bring them to the hydrogen, and then this bond breaks. And one of the carbons from the double bond receives a hydrogen, the other does not receive a hydrogen, which means it loses its bond and will have a positive charge. We always want to put the positive charge on the more substituted carbon to make the more substituted carbocation. So I'm going to put hydrogen here and positive charge here because this is this carbon is connected to only one carbon, but this carbon is connected to, to two carbons. So this carbon is more substituted and therefore that's where I would like to put my carbocation. At this stage, that's when we're going to ask ourselves, can a rearrangement happen or not? So any reaction that involves a carbocation intermediate could possibly have a carbocation rearrangement and uh, we will have to think about whether it will happen or not. So it's not just this reaction that I'm showing you here, it could be also SN1, E1 and any other reaction that goes through a carbocation. Now in this reaction, my carbocation, the carbon that has a positive charge, is connected to two carbons, so I'm going to say that it is secondary. If you look at its neighbor, its neighbor actually is connected to three carbons, going this, this way, and so it is tertiary. If there is a neighbor next to your carbocation that is more substituted than the carbocation, a rearrangement will happen. Now, a rearrangement will happen where you will either move a hydrogen or a carbon to the carbocation. Uh, if possible, we move hydrogens, but if we're given a product and we can see that the product uh, had the ring expansion where we went from, for example, five carbons to six carbon ring. We know we must have moved a carbon. So what we're going to do is we're going to move um, one of the bonds connected to the carbon. So our tertiary carbon, we will move it to the carbocation like this. You can imagine this bond, you can imagine this bond being a door opening on this carbon and closing on this carbon. I'm going to go ahead and I will draw it the ugly way um, and then we will also draw it uh, the, the much better way. So if I want to draw it the ugly way then I just redraw my molecule like this and this bond, this bond that I moved instead of being here is not moving here. So instead of being on this carbon, it's moving to the other carbon, and that's my new molecule. Now we have to think, where did the carbocation move? Well, which carbon lost a bond? So we can see that the bond between this top carbon and this bottom carbon moved. The bottom carbon here still has that bond, but this top carbon lost its bond. So that's where a positive charge will be. Now this molecule is not looking really great, so what I can do is I can redraw it to make it more beautiful. I'm going to number it. I could have also numbered it here, um, but I'm going to number it. I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, and six. And I'm going to draw a much nicer looking six member ring. I will number it any way I want. One, two, three, four, five, six. My carbon one has a methyl group and my carbon six has a positive charge. And then my last step is I will just have this bromine that left in the first step. We see a bromine left. I didn't show it before, but now I'm going to show it. I'm going to come, go ahead and attach to the carbocation, and that's going to be my product. Bromine on one of the carbons, and next to it is a carbon with a methyl group. And we can see that our ring went from a cyclopentane to a cyclohexane. So if you ever draw, if you ever have a reaction that involves a carbocation, you always have to ask yourself, is there a neighbor that is more substituted? And if there is, you're either going to move hydrogen to do a hydride shift or an alkyl shift, a carbon shift. Also, if you're given a problem where you see that the molecule rearranged, for example, here it went from a cyclopentane to a cyclohexane, or the carbons rearranged somehow. That is a strong uh, uh, hint that there was a carbocation rearrangement in your molecule. So when you get to the carbocation intermediate, when you draw your carbocation intermediate, you have to think, how could my molecule rearrange to make the product? I hope you found this lesson helpful and I look forward to seeing you in more lessons for chemistry.